Well, a pair of UBC grads are marking Canada 150 by seeing all that Canada has to offer. Traveling from Yukon to Newfoundland and they are relying on the kindness of strangers and also sticking to a very strict, if not symbolic, budget. And joining us right now in studio in the middle of their cross-country journey is Ori Navarez and Philippe Robert. Uh, so hello to the two of you. And I got to say, you're doing this to mark the Canada 150. And we have a map here of where you've been so far. Uh, and we're going to call it up because we want to take a look at the places that you've touched off. Because you started in Yukon, uh, as we said. From Yukon, uh, Phil, where did you go from Yukon? So we started in Whitehorse in the Yukon and we went to Watson Lake. Whitehorse because it's the westernmost city in Canada, latitude-wise. Mm -hmm. um, it's 135, whereas Victoria is 128. So here is what you have thus far in terms of what you're trying to accomplish, uh, getting from coast to coast. And why this idea? Why did this even come up, Ori? So this whole idea is centered around Canada's 150th anniversary. Um, at first, we wanted to take advantage of the free uh, admission to the national parks. So we wanted to showcase Canada's natural side, the beauty of that and uh, its conservation efforts. Uh, we pitched that to a number of grants and a few ideas, but everyone just hated it, <laughs> even our family and friends. Oh, yeah. so, so we switched the idea to then focus on the people of Canada and trying to connect with as many cultures um, across the country and then showcase that to many Canadians as, like us, they haven't traveled the country. And we yeah. should pick up on that point because as you go uh, hitchhiking across the country, you're also collecting stories, uh, which is going to be, what, a documentary, a book? Is that what you're going to do with it? Yeah. Show? So we're going to make it into a documentary where we share everyone's story and we're also making a book of the different portraits of the different people of Canada. And we're going to be, we write their stories down. We usually film them so we have everything recorded and then we pass it along to them, see if, you know, it's all correct and then we publish it. So if the people see you hitchhiking across Canada and you ask them their story, what questions are you asking them, Ori? So we have four questions that we'll ask everyone that we meet or pick us up or host us. Um, that is, how did you or your family come to Canada? It's your favorite part or what you would miss most about if you were to leave Canada? What is the greatest piece of advice you would give someone? And then how you came to pick us up today? I, I, you know what, I love, I love this story. I, I love that you guys are taking this initiative, but I, 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 we're looking at some of this video. How do you actually get rides? Do you literally just stand there and stick your thumb out and then stick a camera in their faces? How do you do that? There's a few strategies. We have a big Canadian flag, and that's actually helped a lot. Um, a lot of people who have picked us up have never picked up hitchhikers before, so that's been really special for us. We usually try and find a place on the road where there's a turnoff and a significant shoulder, so that gives the cars a safe space to pull over. And uh, yeah, we try and look as friendly as possible, big smiles, big waves, and hope someone stops for us. And so, so far, good experiences I'm taking. Any one good experience that sticks out for either one of you? Um, so yeah, we had a ride actually from Watson Lake all the way down to uh, Dawson Creek with a couple and their mom. And how long is that ride? Uh, that one took us uh, just about two days. Two days. Yeah. So two days with one couple and their mom. They, driving, they drove you all the way down to Dawson Creek. Exactly, yeah. And, um, and we just kind of blended right in with the family. It was really special. <laughs> we, we kind of felt like we were their children almost because mm -hmm. they had two sons and um, they're off, you know, studying, doing their own thing. So they saw us on the side of the road. They used to hitchhike in their time. They picked us up and we actually ended up camping with them, having dinner, breakfast, and just sharing pretty much their family trip with them. Yeah. So it was really special to just kind of just randomly be integrated into, the, into their family like that. Well, I love that because it goes to this narrative of this country being occupied with people who at the, the heart of things are really good people. But have there been any scary rides or scary pickups? <laughs> There's been a few, um, but the vast majority have been good. One of the kind of weirder ones, we did get picked up by someone who was preparing for the apocalypse. So that was definitely an interesting side of things. How long was that journey? <laughs> Uh, it was meant to be an hour and a half, but ended up being around six and a half hours. So, okay. yeah, it was definitely not what we were expecting, but the vast majority, and even uh, that person was really kind to us and really did bring us to where we wanted to go in the end. So we honestly have nothing truly bad to say about anyone who's picked us up. Well, that's, you know, that is really, really good to hear. Uh, but what about practicalities? Like, I mean, here you are. You've been hitchhiking for how, for how many days now, would you say? Uh, it's been 50. 15 days? Yeah. Been, so you've been Roughly hitchhiking cross-country for 15 days. Here you are. You're freshly scrubbed. You look, you look presentable. <laughs> How do you keep up with hygiene? How do you shower? Where do you sleep at night? Um, so along the way, we carry tents, sleeping mats, sleeping bags. We have a store of food because we need to be able to be completely self-sufficient in the sense that if we get dropped off in a city in the middle of nowhere or on the side of a road, we need to be able to you know, survive a few days until we get a ride. Um, but luckily, one thing that's with the culture of hitchhiking is that if you get picked up, you often get invited 
to someone's house or they'll give you food or whatnot. Uh, we also have a series of people that have reached out to us, even random people that have, we've never met just through our social media page or website that say, you know, when you're coming through Toronto or Winnipeg, you know, give me a call at this number. I'd love to host you for the night. Yeah, so it's wonderful. a mixture of those few things, and it's been really nice to see. Well, we'll definitely have your social media links on our at CBC Morning Live, our Twitter feed there, and on our Facebook page. But th that said, the next stop is what, Ottawa? Ottawa. We actually have a special goal for Ottawa. We Okay, wait, wait. So a special goal, which you told me about. So we're going to say to anyone who works in the Prime Minister's office, listen to this special goal. What's the special goal here? We would really love the opportunity to pitch our tents in the Honourable Prime Minister's yard and interview him and ask him the same four questions that we ask every Canadian. Okay, there we go. Well, Ori, Phil, good luck on your journey. Uh, great idea. Don't, don't listen to the people who said it was a bad idea, a wonderful <laughs> idea. Thank you for that and good luck. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you for having okay. us. And that's Ori Navarez and Philippe Robert.